Well, in ministry, we all know what it's like to have really high aspirations to do a lot of good things. But the problem is, if you don't have systems and habits in place to get those things done, they won't happen. And so today on Practical Church Planting, we are going to give you six needed systems to improve your ministry. Welcome back to Practical Church Planting. Today we're going to give you six systems needed to improve your ministry. Yes, and uh, and this is a, this I've been thinking about this a while because I got there's a quote from James Clear. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's from his book Atomic Habits, which is my one of my most recommended books to other people. Mm-hmm. Like if I were to tell people, I was before we when we were setting up, I was thinking these are not ministry books, but if I could recommend two books to people in ministry, it would be Atomic Habits by James Clear and Deep Work by Cal Newport, mm, yeah. just to help us like focus and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And so he has a quote that says, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And I've been thinking about that a, a, a lot in terms of preaching, and, you know, because we all aspire to like preach well and here's how I'm going to do it. Yeah. But aspirations, as we all know, does not mean you actually did what you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So they're thinking about systems that we aspire to, and we're going to talk about preaching and various things that like we have goals to do well as a church or personally. But if you don't have a system to actually make it happen, you're not going to do it well. So you can't just say, "I want to, ha- I want to, you know, pre- to preach a decent or a good sermon." You have to prep prep it well. Yep. So if your goal is to preach well, but you don't have a system to make it happen, then you won't do it. And maybe as you're listening to this, you are frustrated with that. Yep. Or we're, we'll talk about follow up and various things to like be a, an effective church to connect people to engage people. You can't just say, "I want to do it." You need to have a system in place to do it. And and we've talked about stuff, and we'll talk about here. The really nice thing about systems, too, is it makes your work easier because mm-hmm. you're not always week to week, day to day, trying to figure out how to do it and what to do. Once you have systems in place, you can, I don't know, run them without thinking yeah. and help you focus on other things. So any thoughts before we get into them? I have thoughts that we'll get to when we get into them. All right. So, so we'll remember, here's the quote. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. So if you do not have good systems or good processes or habits or disciplines or whatever, whatever you want to call it, whatever you aspire to do, you will not do with any consistency. Yep. So you've got to have consistency. And so here are the ones we'll talk about a couple of them. Uh, number one is preaching. Everybody wants to preach better, (laughs) whether you preach a lot or little or whatever. Now, uh, specifically, we have two episodes that you'll want to go back to and listen to if you haven't. Uh, One is episode 241, which is a little bit more recent, Mm -hmm. which I believe is seven tips for more effective sermons. Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe I think I talk a little bit about how I prep. And then episode 163, which is even further back, I think it's about two two years old at this point, which is my totally about my system for preaching, which... I might have tweaked a, t- a tiny bit, but I haven't tweaked much. Yeah. <laughs> so it's still pretty similar. So episode 241 and 163, if you want to go back to. But here's the thing with preaching. Right? We all want to preach, and, but if you don't have a consistent time in your calendar blocked off, then it's just last minute, and it's not good, mm-hmm. and it's frantic. And even if it is somewhat on your schedule, if it feels last minute, you're, you're uns- you feel unsettled every week. And so I'm not going to go into all of mine and here again, and I know that part of this is personal preference, so you got to do what you're most comfortable with. Yeah. But this is part of the reason why I highly, highly, highly recommend. I could not recommend it enough. If you preach consistently, to be at least one week ahead on sermon prep, at least one week ahead. Now we're four to five weeks ahead, which is really helpful. And not, not that like the sermon is completely done, mm-hmm. but again, you might want to listen to 241 or 163 if you want to see exactly how that happens. Not that you need to do it that way, but just some tips. But the problem with Preaching the week of and doing a summer prep the week of is if it's hard to come by, you're stressed out. Um, it doesn't give you enough time to like sit and walk away from it and come back mm-hmm. to review it with other people that we talked about to go over it out loud. Especially if you, you know, don't do your prep till Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. That's just not a lot of time to get a good sermon. Mm-hmm. And so I would at least recommend, you know, having a, a study one of the days a week ahead of time um, to take a few hours to kind of write your get your notes, put your outline, your manuscript, however you do it, so that you have it, and it's a rough thing, it's not perfect. That way it gives you time to, A, talk it over with somebody, Mm -hmm. um, and then also so that the next week you're not... you. Like, one of the best... I I don't know, I feel like I'm saying a lot of things here. (laughs) One of the best gifts I have given myself as a pastor who preaches consistently is that on Monday morning, I am not wondering what I'm going to do next week. Yeah, for sure. And in fact, Monday morning, the first thing I do is 
reduce my notes and review the sermon for Sunday. Mm-hmm. So I know exactly, like it's not done yet, but like I know exactly how it's going to go for the most part. Like I'm not wondering, especially if something comes up during the week and you got to push stuff around, which mm-hmm. can happen. So again, that's why your systems need to be good. And if you're preaching week of, you might often find yourself wondering, you know, or have to, have to move things around and it's just not good. And so 241 and 163, if you want specific tips on how I do it, not to do it my way, but to maybe tweak your own, but you've got to have a consistent system that doesn't change if you want to preach better sermons. Yeah, I think, <laughs> um, especially when we're talking about getting ahead in sermon prep, I, I was thinking about this recently because I listened to uh, a, a pastor that I, I like, and I was listening to him, and he was talking about, I think it was th- right on New Year's, um, like the New Year's message, and talking about how he was sitting down like that Tuesday to write it, mm-hmm. and how he's like, that's why I do it. For some reason, it came up in the message about like how Tuesday mornings, I write the message for that week. And I was thinking, I'm like, you know, whatever. If it, if it works for you, it works for you, I guess. But I was thinking... Granted, I'm not a pastor that preaches every week, um, but that sounds t- awful. Like, not just like, it, it sounds stressful, yes, but also like the, the idea of waking up, like you said, waking up Monday morning thinking, what's this Sunday going to be? Just sounds like, it sounds like unnecessary pressure and anxiety when there's other things to worry about. Like, yeah. I, so I don't know. I, so I, I was thinking about that and... What I was thinking is if you if you are a pastor and you had someone who was coming up who wanted to learn to preach and maybe like a staff member or someone who wanted to be a pastor and you're giving them, you know, a handful of Sundays a year to preach and they said that they're going to wait until that Monday beforehand mm. to start thinking about what they're going to do, write it, prep it, you would you would tell them that that's a really poor use of their time because obviously they have a lot longer of a time ahead of time to, to deal with it. And so on, on the flip side, you're like, well, I don't have a lot of time ahead of time because I do it every single week. But that's why you get ahead. So you do have that. So I think like waiting until yeah. the last minute, especially if you're newer, especially if you're um, you know, a younger pastor or church planter, which I think most people listening are, I think you're really doing yourself a disservice of waiting until week of to crack it open and start yeah. working on it. And I just think that you're running, you'll, you'll kind of iron out a lot of the issues that you run into if you give yourself a little bit of uh, time ahead, which you can't really do if you don't have a system of doing it. Yeah. Like it's, it can't magically happen. So I think, that'll really, I think yeah. that really helps. Uh, the nice thing too <clears throat> about, uh, about being ahead is yeah, you're not wondering what you're doing every week. And it also does not mean you're, you're not prepping multiple sermons a week. Yeah. So I'll yeah. just to say really briefly, again, you got to go to the other episodes to get more details. So my, and this is not like an unfaithful thing if you do it week of. It's just something to consider. Mm-hmm. So on Wednesday is my sermon prep for, whatever, four to six weeks, somewhere around there, we're ahead of time. And so I write the sermon, and it's really rough, and I've got all my notes and whatever. The next week, you know, Brian and I sit down, I talk through the sermon, which is also really helpful because you're not as emotionally connected. I mean, you still write it, so you still don't want it to suck, but you're not as emotionally connected with it. So if you're preaching yeah. week of and you're going over it with someone like the same day or the next day, it kind of hurts a little bit more when it's like not good. Mm. Yeah. It's like you're you're just you're like oh I wrote this last week whatever let's see how it goes, so that helps. Um, and then I don't look at it again until week of Monday morning. The first thing I do is I, I use an iPad whatever I talk about on that thing. So I reduce my notes basically to an outline, and I don't talk over it out loud, but I just kind of go through it so I know exactly how it's going to go. Tuesday morning I talk through it out loud, tweak it if I need to. Thursday morning I talk through it out loud, and then I'm done. Mm-hmm. And then I look over it again Sunday morning before I come here. I don't talk through it out loud, but spend. 15, 20 minutes just going over it in my head, looking at my notes. And that's really helpful because it's never never wondering how it's going to go that week. And then again, if you have something coming up or if you're just going out of town or something and you're still preaching that Sunday, there's not a stressor of how this is going to get done. Because yeah. I can, and I've done this before, like if I'm preaching a Sunday, but I'm going to be out of town a couple of days, like even Mondays, say I'm going out of town, Sunday afternoon, I'll do my what I do on Monday, Sunday afternoon. Mm. And I'll go over it again. So if I'm out of town, maybe I'll only go over it out loud once instead of twice. Um, but it's just so it's just so easy to move it around when you have a consistent system. So whatever it looks like, it needs to be on your calendar the same time every single week. And and uh, yeah, don't just aspire. Yeah. You need to have a good system. And I think just to like further this argument of why you should get ahead, I, I was thinking we uh, you know the handful of times a year I preach. I remember it was it was a couple of times sometime last year. But, you know, for whatever reason, people were out of town and kind of schedules got pushed back a little bit. And we ended up like, like we've talked about, we we collab, we we talk through all the messages like uh, a handful of weeks before they're actually given. And for some reason, this message had gotten pushed, and we are going over it. I think it was the week before I was giving it, which is which is closer than usual. Usually, we're a couple weeks out. And I remember going into it thinking like, please don't be terrible. Like, please <laughs> don't rip this apart because I really don't want to rewrite a message the week I'm giving it. Like yeah. that just sounds terrible. But when you're far enough ahead, you can go over it and you have enough time that you can 
it doesn't really like yeah i always hope it's good but it, if 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 i end up going into it and they're like this doesn't make any sense and end up tearing it apart it's fine because yeah. i have time to deal with it and time to address these issues where if we're going over a week of it's like i just got to deal with I, I can't rewrite it on wednesday or i don't want to and so i just got to deal with what we got yeah. um so i think it really helps and i think also as, if you're a especially if you're a church planter, if you're just getting into this kind of groove of preaching every week, I think it can be easy, especially if you think things are really difficult now or if you're struggling, it can be easy to think that things will just get better with more reps mm. or more time doing it, which th- there is there is some truth to that. Like, yes, over time, you'll get better by repetition. You'll get better by doing it, but you're not going to really overcome the issues that you have by accident. Yeah. You know, you're not going to overcome them just by just by reps. There are some things you'll, you might get more, you'll get more comfortable in delivery, probably more comfortable in the writing process and things like that. But if you actually can see like stumbling blocks you have or issues that you have in the process, they're not going to iron themselves out just by just over time magically. So I think having a, a system of how to address these issues and how to actually deal with this head on is really going to help, if, especially if you're identifying some issues that you currently have. Yep. And the last reason mm-hmm. of the many we would put, I would encourage this <laughs> is because if you have a teaching calendar and you need to adjust mm-hmm. the text, you can do that without messing everything up. So we're in Mark right now, and we, you know, Mark's a long book. Yeah. <laughs> so I've looked at various churches and how they have scheduled their preaching through Mark, and so we just kind of copy that, and then we, but we can tweak it. And so in a couple of weeks, we're having someone else, come, another pastor come and preach at New City, and I'd given him his text like two months ago, you know, here's what we're going to do. But because I, we're so far ahead, as, you know, last week I was working on the, the week before he's going to come, I combined a passage, mm. which I would not have been able to do if I was doing it week of. Oh, yeah, good point. And so then I was able to tell him, hey, have you worked on your sermon yet? Which I knew it wouldn't, because it's like four to six weeks, and most people <laughs> aren't, aren't, aren't like that. And so I was able, able to tell him, Here, can you do this one instead? And I, was, I just would not have been able to do that if I was week of. And yeah. so you can tweak things a lot easier Yeah, as well. good point. So you need a good system for preaching. Uh, the second one is a follow-up process. You need a good system, not just... And we talk about this various episodes, not just aspirational... I'm going to follow up with somebody, but you need a system that you don't have to think about every week mm-hmm. that's automated and simple that you can do. And we would encourage, regardless of the size of your church, not it, not to be, it's to do some auto, automated stuff. We use text in church, and there's other ones as well, mm-hmm. um, where you get a, you know, if someone fills out a connect card with their phone number and email address, they get a series of text and emails from us over the course of three weeks. Not a ton, but a couple, yeah. you know, and then we put them obviously in our normal newsletter thing. And then if, again, we've said before on the connect card, if they check something specific like community groups or partnership or whatever, we follow up with them that week on that thing, but still let them get the automated stuff. Mm -hmm. And that way, every single person, (laughs) we've talked about this recently, where we went eight of nine weeks where this didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so that was fun. Unfortunate. (laughs) Um, Yes. Yeah. That, that was the case (laughs) of someone not doing their job, not us like, but anyway, the whole other thing. Um, you need to have to do it. So again, we, yep. I would not recommend, even if it's small, just to be like, uh, I'm going to email them personally or do this. Now, there, there, there could be personal touches. So maybe you mm-hmm. want to, maybe you get a, you get their address and you want to mail them a letter. Yeah, That's fine. I would put a, a reminder on Todoist, like we talked about on the last episode, mm-hmm. a, a recurring reminder or I would ever use every Monday, write letters to whatever new Connect cards we get. Yep. But don't just have it be you having to remember to do all the process. Because again, we would recommend more than one email. <laughs> and you're just not going to remember all of them. They're going to get lost and who's going to do it when. And so you need a system for good follow-up, not just aspiration. I hope I'm going to do this well. Yeah, and this is, it's so good to start when you're small because this isn't even like a, this will be good at once you become a gigantic church. But even small to mid-sized church, if you're over 100 people, you know, if you're even maybe a little less than that, it's gonna you're going to get to a point where it's hard for you to maintain doing it personally yeah. and where stuff f- starts falling through the cracks. And it's much harder to implement these systems down the road than it is in the beginning when you're small, when there's less things going on. As the, the, the longer you're in existence, as the church grows, even if it doesn't grow to like big numbers, just things get more complicated. There's more things involved in each system. And so if you can start this now, even if you're sitting there like, man, we get a new guest every couple of weeks, I can send an email every couple of weeks. That's true. But if you implement this now, it'll save you so much headache yep. down the road, even if you don't grow to be gigantic, even if you just are starting to make a little bit of progress and things get a little more complicated. So uh, regardless of size, regardless of how many guests you get, I, I would definitely say this is something you need to have uh, implemented as soon as possible. And it's also helpful because even if you don't get a ton of guests, you're sending the same information to every person anyway. Yeah. So instead of having to rewrite it or find the old email and copy and paste it or whatever every single time, just 
put it in the system and then it'll automatically do it for you. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And, and I, so that's what I would do. Have a system of follow up. Again, if it's just when we get a connect card, a new person, I'm going to personally try to remember what to do. You know, it's not going to work long term. And when things are smaller, unless people, that's the time to try to figure some of this out so you're not scrambling later on. Yep. So, you know, because whatever you set up, it's not going to be perfect the first time. You're going to tweak it. So you want to get started on it as soon as you can. And this is one of the few things I think that we're going to be talking about today that t- that involves a little bit of a cost. And this is there's ever there's there's a cost to everything and there's always free options to do ever free ways to do everything but this is one of the things that we will we will die on this hill that this is one of the things that really is worth spending a little bit of money on um because it's just it it's it scales it's not going to be easy for you to do uh manually going forward even though that's the free way and so i would i would definitely encourage you to spend a little bit of money and it is a little bit like it's yeah. it, and that's it, it's actually a little bit. I wasn't like being sarcastic. <laughs> like it's actually just a little bit of money. It's not expensive, um, but it's worth spending a little bit of money on this to to automate it, get it out of your hair a little bit, and make sure everyone's followed up with correctly. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it is. I could be completely wrong on this. Somewhere around fifty bucks a month is what we spend, mm-hmm. maybe. So if fifty bucks a month is not worth it for you to retain new people and connect to your church, then <laughs> that's not good. Other questions. <laughs> so yep. follow up. You need to have a system, not just I hope it go well. Mm-hmm. Uh, number three. A task and request keeping system. Now we've talked about this a lot, but this is just this is so important to be somebody who says you're going to do what you're going to do, and not to be someone who, anytime someone asks you to do something or you say you're going to do it, they have to wonder, are they actually going to do it? Mm-hmm. Um, you can do whatever works for you. I, I, there's a lot of books on there, like getting stuff done by. Well, I forget the guy's name. There's there's various ways to do it. What, how I what works for me. I, you know, I'm not passionate about you do it this way. Like I am passionate <laughs> about you being ahead on sermon prep. Yeah. Um, so I use Todoist on my phone and on my computer. I use a little hotkey thing, so like I don't even have to on my computer. I don't even have to open up Todoist. You, mm-hmm. I just hit like Command Shift A, and I can if something's in my mind. Like I'm in the middle of sermon prep, for example, and I need to follow up with somebody. I can say follow up with this person on Thursday or whatever day it is, and hit enter, and it goes away, and it's on my thing. But the same thing is helpful for me if I'm talking to people like on a Sunday morning or something like that, where if they if there's something that I said I'm going to do or they asked me to do and I confirmed, I will right there take out my phone, click my to-do list app, Todoist app, and put it on there. Yeah. Every single time. It's just not worth forgetting. And I think people appreciate that because and I think people are often used to people saying they're gonna do it, but then they're not sure. Mm. And by you actually taking note of it in front of them, it actually shows them that you care. Like this happened two weeks ago, two Sundays ago. We thought we had RSVP'd for a wedding, but we hadn't. And so they asked me if Christina and I were coming. And I was like, yeah, we have an RSVP. Or Christina thought she had RSVP'd. He's like, and he's like, oh, okay, we just want to know we didn't got it. And so I put on my phone right then mm-hmm. for I was like, RSVP today. Yeah. I went home. <laughs> we RSVP'd. We, we realized we had an RSVP'd. And uh, I, you know, it was something I would have forgot if I hadn't written it down. Mm-hmm. So whatever it is for you, like you just you have to have a way every single time of always. I, I just think you will stand out. If you are somebody who actually does what you say you're going to do all the time, yeah, because so few people do that, and I can tell you, like, I just know from experience, I'm around certain people, it's like, okay, I'm like, yeah, they're not going to remember that, and it's just kind of like it's kind of a bummer. Mm. And so, whatever it is for you, you need to have a system, and I would encourage you to have it on you, where you can write then and there, take note of what you said you're going to do, mm-hmm. and not just assume or hope that you're going to follow through with what you say. Yeah, this, I mean, especially working in a church where you're around people every single week, you're going to get asked to, you're going to get asked for things or to do things that you have to remember the next day. Like yeah. it happens most Sundays. Someone asks something. And and we've talked about this before. Like I think you get you can get to a point in a relationship where you can tell people if they ask you in person, like, hey, I need you to email that to me and kind of put the onus back on them to to do it. But like this just happened um two days ago. On, on Sunday this past week, uh someone came up to me who's newer not not brand new but newer to the church and asked for <laughs> asked for uh our pre we, we print out our message notes every week and she missed a couple weeks and asked if we still had them because she's trying to like save all of them for this series. And wow. um <laughs> and I was like okay first off how many do you need? And it was only two. So like I can I can scrounge up two. It's not a big deal. But um I I met her a few times. I don't really know her very well. And it would have been, I I felt like it would have been weird for me to say, I need you to email that to me Mm because she's newer to the church and we don't know each other super well. And so I was like, you know, I can, I can, I can put this in my phone. I can remember to do this tomorrow. It takes a few minutes, but I did right then. And that was in the middle of, you know, right after church. So people were coming and going, there's no universe where I would have (laughs) remembered that 30 minutes later. And, and so just having a little, a little plan of what to do if someone asks you something in person of what you're going to do with these different tasks or what you're going to do if you get a request, I think really helps. And it shows that you actually care that 
what you're, you care about people and are willing to do what you say you're going to do. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, unless it's like a, I don't know, a fellow staff member or like a really close friend, mm-hmm. it just sounds kind of not great to be like, hey, can you email it to me? Yeah. Now, it's different if it's like online communication, like someone on Facebook or whatever. Oh, for sure. Yeah. They ask something and I always tell everyone, you've got to email that to me. If it's a church person, I will actually, and I have their contact, I'll... I'll, I'll like email them. I won't make them do it. Mm. But like through practical church planning, whatever, some of you guys have reached out. Like that's just how I do it. So if you actually care, you're going to have to <laughs> do the extra stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just put on your phone or have some way to do it. And so I would just ask you this. If, if I were to go to your church on Sunday and I were to ask you some, if you could do something, how would you make sure it gets done? And if it's just I'm going to remember it, that's not a good system because mm-hmm. every single person knows that we have forgotten. Yeah. And um, it's just it's hard to build trust. And I, I think it just says a lot. It says a lot to say, "Hey, I'm going to do what you said." So even like even if it's like somebody wants to meet with you, like for me, I, I pretty much do everything through email mm-hmm. for, with meetings because like text, and then I have to get my calendar. It's just mm-hmm. I'm like, so I will make a note that I'm I will email that person um, tomorrow yeah. or something. So like it's gonna I don't, I'm not going to schedule it on my phone right then because it's just too much. I mean, it, it, that could work for you, but for me that just doesn't work. Um, so I'll like, hey, I'll follow up with you tomorrow and put on a thing. And even though they ask me, it's going to happen. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So follow up and request keeping. You've got to have a system, not just I'm going to think about. It. Number four is email. Everybody's <laughs> favorites. <laughs> now yep. again, we have an episode specifically on email. We do. Also, if you want to do inbox zero, how you can do it, and it's not as hard as I think a lot of people think. That's episode 196. So how to do email slash. If you're interested in inbox zero, we also talk about on that. So episode 196 is we actually give you some tips on a system. Mm-hmm. Your system cannot be, it's going to sit in the... Here's what always happens. Not always happens. You get a bunch of emails. Your inbox is disorganized, which various books like Deep Work or World Without Email by Cal Newport is also excellent. And they just... They all talk about how your inbox is not a good task list because psychologically, every time you see it, whatever, not a good task list. It doesn't matter. Um, What you should do, what what often happens is you have an email. If you're not disciplined on on responding on time, it sits there for a couple days. And then there's like a certain amount of time where it's like, ah, it's been enough time, like whatever. But yet the person who sent it doesn't get a response. (laughs) And again, if we're leaders in the church and the church is made up of people, emails always come from people. There's no excuse to let it sit there. Even if it's something you're not going to do or whatever. Like it's just, it's funny to me when I get, (laughs) I recently got an email from someone who's planting near Raleigh and it was one of those generic, they probably sent it to a bunch of churches Mm -hmm. saying, we'd love to meet with your staff. We were elder team, you know, and it's obviously like, to raise money. Yeah. <laughs> so I, because I have a system of, I always respond, unless it's spam, I'll respond and I'll tell you no. Mm-hmm. Um, I respond and say, hey, I actually would love to meet with you because we're all about church planting. All of our church plants funding for the year is accounted for, mm-hmm. to be clear. Um, and I, I think he was just, resp- he was just like, I can always tell in their emails, like they're just like, you actually responded. <laughs> yeah. Like you didn't just ignore it. And so hopefully we're going to get together again. I've sent him my email. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see if it's, um, if it was just about the money, which on, I'm not, I don't know about this person, but I found is very, very much like, you don't actually want to talk to me. You just want to get my money. Yep. Which I'm like, don't do, don't, by the way, don't do that. Yeah. Especially <laughs> if you're planting, don't reach out to local, I mean, reach out to local pastors. I think that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But if someone says, I don't have money, I just want to meet with you, you should meet with them to learn from them. You never know relationships you might get. Like, yeah. you should absolutely do that. And if you only want to think about money, <laughs> Next year's budget isn't taken up yet. Yeah. Like maybe you can develop a relationship and La- get funding down the last road. Last <laughs> year the same thing happened. This guy emailed me. I said, No, we can't we can't fund we can't we can't give funds, but I'd love to get together with you. And he didn't even respond. Mm. I'm like, it just makes you seem like Yeah. Like you don't care. Which I know I get you're trying to get money. Like I'm not knocking that, but like to just whatever. So <laughs> you need to have a system of somebody emails you that you respond within I would recommend forty eight hours or twenty eight, twenty four if it's during the week. Mm-hmm. And however that is, again, it can't just be aspirational of I'm gonna do this. A task list is also a great way to get stuff out of your email because if you need to respond to somebody, you can put on a task list and remove it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you got to do it on a certain date. But you've got to have a system to not be one of those people that's like, sorry, I'm just not. If you're in ministry and if you're a pastor or church leader, I'm not good at email is not valid. (laughs) Like, you don't have to love it. But if it's part of your job to connect with people, you've got to have a way that you're following up with people. 196 is our episode number if you want more more about how how you could do it. But... You've got to have a system for email, not just they just sit there hundreds at a time, and I might, I might get to half of them. I just listened to a podcast this morning, and this was not ministry-related and had nothing to do with this, but this just happened to come up in conversation where one of the guys was saying how his uh, unread email, in, or inbox Don't unread... Tell Don't tell me. <laughs> was like, I mean, it was like 15,000. 
Like, and, and so it was, it was clear, like, obviously you're not using this, but, but his complaints or the reason it got brought up is he was saying, you know, for the show, people write in and stuff. And he was like, if you wrote in before this certain date, like a couple weeks ago, please just rewrite because I get, it gets lost in my email. And, and then, and then the, the conversation <laughs> with the other people got brought up, like, like what's your inbox look like? And then they got on this whole thing. Um, but it's like, clearly this is a, this is an extreme case study, but this is clearly like he's saying, I cannot, I, I got lost I, or I lost your emails because it's disorganized. <laughs> and so obviously like, hopefully, hopefully you understand like email is at least relatively important and it hasn't gotten to that extreme. Yeah. But one thing I um, will say is if you're like, especially if you're new into ministry or new into, new into this whole thing and you haven't, um, it's a little bit easier if like you're starting out a church plant and you start with a new email address, <laughs> you know, if you're starting with like your, at your church name.com. But if you've had something for a long time and you're kind of like trying to get a handle on it, the thing that helped me, because for a while, this wasn't really a big deal. And like, we, I would respond to things and things would get missed. And so when we kind of like had this uh, reckoning as a staff of like, we needed to be better at email um, or not like, not like we were bad, but just like, this is actually important. The, the kind of way to get your head around it, which just, which was a revolutionary for me is you archive everything. And that like, because <laughs> for me, I was like, yes, I get inbox zero. I get that it's important, but I, I've had this email address for a few years at the time and I just like Gmail is not efficient and I, I, I couldn't figure out a way to just like get rid of everything. I didn't want to delete everything because I was nervous. I would need something. Um, but if you archive everything, then I it's remember gone. that. Yes. You're and like, like, you're like, what happens to it? Yeah. Has, <laughs> archive it, it. it never even like it. dawned on me. Cause like sometimes I will just, if a new email comes and I don't want to delete it, but I'm not going to like, it's not something I need, but I'm maybe on the, in the future, I'll archive it if it doesn't need a response. Um, but it never dawned on me just like, literally archive everything. So if you're wondering how to start this process, archive everything, and then all of a sudden you literally have an empty uh, inbox, yep. make sure you don't archive things that need a response, like if it's something recent. But like, <laughs> archive everything, and if like if it's been a month and you haven't responded to somebody, they assume you're not going to respond, and responding now isn't going to help. So like, just archive it anyways, and <laughs> yeah, get ramifications it. later. If you have tons of un responded to emails and you just want to start over episode 196 there's actually a template we give you of what you can just say mm. to make that happen yeah so but yeah don't hit delete hit archive so it's all gone but you can search it all later but you can start this at any point so don't think you're too far gone was the moral of that story yeah. and uh it's it's definitely and it's it's just a lot less stressful too yep. like it helps you respond to people yes it's good for your like pastoring communicating with people but to open up an, an inbox this and glorious. see all that. Like I have, I have, I have multiple emails because I have a few different things. But one of them is like a shared email. My wife and I have always had it. We kind of just use it at this point for like signing up for things, and it's just kind of like a whatever email. But very rarely, I'll I'll open it up, and it's just like I can feel the stress like <laughs> creep over me. And it's not anything we use for anything important now. But just seeing like that many emails, I'm just like, get it's rid so of funny. It. I hate I, it. Every once in a while, people will like post a screenshot of how many emails they have. Oh yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, I do judge. <laughs> Lord forgive me. Because yeah. I think two things. One, that's just so late. Like, it's not impressive to have a lot of emails because A, you don't subscribe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know those are not. Emails. Like, no, you yeah. don't get nobody. If you very few people get actually get legitimately hundreds of emails a week, like yeah. legitimately ones. And so, if you have hundreds of emails in your inbox, it's because you don't unsubscribe for anything, mm -hmm. and it means you're lazy. Yep. No, well, I shouldn't. That's not a blanket statement. You might have a really good system. Yeah. But the people that I see post pictures that I know, I'm like, that's not impressive. Yeah. I'm like, deal with your inbox. <laughs> it makes me not want to email you because yeah, I don't trust sure. you. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> whatever your system is, I, again, I would I would encourage you to ha actually have one, not to be like, well, I just try to respond. Mm -hmm. So try to figure that out. And what this will do is, it, I'm just telling you, if you have a, a system for preaching, your you, your sense of overwhelm will go way down. Mm -hmm. A system for follow up that you don't have to think about every week, or people actually getting followed up with. A system for making sure you do what you say you're going to do. A system for your email. I mean. These are habits, and what you do with habits is you don't think about them. So yep. your stress level goes down. Again, you don't have to do inbox zero at all. If you've got some of that works, but one of my favorite things, I mean, I, it's pretty much zero every time I check it, certainly by the end of the workday. Mm. But one of my favorite things, because, you know, I don't come in on Friday. I do, I do a little stuff on Friday, but I don't come on Friday. I don't do anything on Saturday. Is I just love every Thursday afternoon when I leave. <laughs> it's just there's it's nothing gone. in my inbox. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just such a great feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... I'll let's say have a system 196 if you haven't listened to that, if you want one. Yep. Uh, number five, uh, two more, is setting up meetings. So again, what, what I would say to this is, this took me a while to figure this out, is that it can take a long time to try to set up meetings with people. You know, the generic, what works for you, works for, works for you, takes forever. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to the, I would offer three times, which typically people chose one of those three, which was nice, yeah. but it was still... Every time I'd have to write an email, I'd have to pick three times and try to make them different for the person. It was just kind of annoying to have to do every time. 
Um, and then I switched to, which we talked about last episode, Calendly, which there's, there's, I use the free version. There's a paid version that it would probably be nice. I don't have to do it at this point. I'm sure at some point I would because you can change the type of meetings. Mm. Like right, right, the free one you can only do like one type of meeting for like one time slot. So it's like defaulted to an hour. <laughs> and on the description it says 12 or 12:30 is lunch. Everything else is coffee or whatever. And you can if you pay <laughs> yeah. for them you can whatever. Um, but it saves a ton of time. Mm-hmm. And so again, like the church planner that wanted to meet with me to talk about fundraising and I was like, well, I can't, but I'd love to get together. He said, that sounds good. I just sent him my calendar Mm -hmm. and that's it. The ball's in his court. And that (laughs) is for everybody. It's like, if someone wants to meet or if you want to meet with someone, just send them your calendar. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is just, again, this is an easy thing of always trying to figure out what to do. Calendly works with Google Calendar or or I'm sure whatever one you use, I'm sure you can set it up. So like if you have something come up, like I have designated times, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that are always open. And as I schedule things, it'll on Calendly, it'll automatically take those blocks out. So I don't have to, you know, say I'm not available in multiple places. Yeah. Um, but that's just an easy, you know, another way not to think about setting meetings with people is using something like that, which automates it for you. Yeah. I think this is especially useful in there. <laughs> I, I think it's especially useful if you haven't planted yet. I mean, it's useful mm-hmm. regardless, but if you haven't planted yet, you're trying to get a lot of meetings. And that can also, I feel like, be the time where you feel like this is the most, um, I don't know what the word is like that you may feel guilty for using something like this. Yeah. If guilty is the right word, like in, in other words, thinking that you're making, making it thinking that it makes it look like you're too important to just yeah. like set a meeting, you know, which I think you said was a was a thought of you or er, that you had early on, or at least that you've heard other people have. Um, mm-hmm. But that'd be a, that's like the prime time you want it because like, hopefully, hopefully before you plant, you're meeting with a ton of people, you're meeting with people in your church that are going to be joining potentially other pastors and like, you should be meeting with people. And so trying to juggle yeah. all that in your head or juggle all that by like remembering, trying, going back a few uh, points, trying to remember it yourself to put it in your calendar so you don't forget to show up or whatever. And kind of doing all this is is uh, going to be really stressful. So if you kind of develop a system early on, it'll help. And obviously as a pastor down the road, you're going to meet with people forever. So. Yeah, and it's also helpful too, even if, even if you're in the plant phase and you're trying to meet with everybody anytime, it's also not good if you have weekly stuff that you need to do. Like if you're, oh, even, yeah. or even, even after you've launched early on, if like, you, your schedule is not as full as it might be later, so that can be a tendency of anytime someone's available, I'm going to meet with him. But as we talked about, if you have a system for preaching, you should have times every week where you don't do it. Yeah. And so, and people, you know, respect that. And what I always do if I feel like it might not work is I say, "Here's my calendar. If another time does, if none of these times work for you, which hardly ever happens, <laughs> um, let me know when we find something else." Yeah. Um, so, use a, make that make that easy. That's yep. what we would say. For sure. And then last but not least, a daily calendar. So here's what we mean. Again, you don't rise to level your goals. You fall to level your systems. If you feel like you don't get as much done as you want to do or you don't know what you did during the day or like a lot of people, this is not just ministry. You have all this stuff to do, but when the time comes, you don't really feel like doing it. So you sit there for a while to decide what to do. You usually (laughs) choose a thing of least resistance so you can get it done. The better thing to do is to have your day calendared ahead of time so you're not wondering. It's like, oh, it's 1030. I'm working on this. I've already decided. I don't have to use brain power decision mm-hmm. making. I don't have to use my willpower, which also goes down throughout the day because I've already told myself, here's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And it might sound like it's not a big a thing. I'm just telling you it's massive. So what I do, again, do whatever works for you, is I have things in my calendar. You, you really, you don't have to use a digital calendar, I, I guess, but it's a lot easier <laughs> for this. <laughs> I have certain things in my calendar that happen every week, like sermon prep, you know, this, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, typically for me, it's like everything, all of my, my days are pretty much always accounted for until 12. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, until 12. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, and then what happens is the af- afternoons can be somewhat flexible. Now, I might have tasks that I do on those same days every week, but it doesn't matter when I do them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I will do is I will have my same things there. And then the day before, so Sunday night or Monday afternoon before I leave for the next day or Tuesday afternoon, whatever, I will go to my next day's calendar and I will put in the things that I need to do that day mm-hmm. by looking at my task list that tells me what I have to do the next day. Yeah. And so the nice thing is the things that take 30 minutes or more, you can take them off your task list once they're on your calendar. Again, you got you got, you got to do it differently for you. I like this approach too, because there's certain things that I do. For example, you know, we ha- we clean the church, right? right? So one of the mm-hmm. things that takes me about 30 minutes is I set the chairs and vacuum every week. Um, I don't put that on my calendar because it's not something I want to do in the morning. Mm-hmm. It's something I do in the afternoon typically. But the, the reason why I, I like to put on my task list and not my calendar is because I like to keep my afternoons open for meetings. Yeah. So, and then the day before, if no one, there's no meeting there, you know, I put there for calendar or whatever. But whatever it is, I would, I would just recommend 
What do you have to do the next day? And you don't want to like schedule like five minutes at a time. That's too. That's not enough. <laughs> yeah. You could have a bunch of small tasks. So then you could just say tasks for an hour, mm-hmm. and you sh- and say I'm going to go through the order that they're there. I'm not going to skip around. Like the next, I'm just going to go bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Um, but have you set your daily calendar the next day so you know exactly what you're doing when you're supposed to do it, so that you're not sitting wondering what what am I supposed to do next? Yeah, it's really. I mean, it's it can be really frustrating to get through a day of working and think that you didn't get anything done. And this is like the the easiest way to solve that problem because I, no matter how much I, we've all had times where no matter how much you've gotten done, you feel like it was a wasted day, like <laughs> whether it's in ministry or outside of ministry and other jobs. And so if you, when you can actually look back at your day, especially if you're, um, if you, if you're not necessarily working on something that has a, uh, uh, a physical outcome, like even if it's uh, prepping a sermon, if if yeah. you're not working on prepping a sermon and you have a finished sermon at the end of the day, yeah. but if you have a bunch of other things you need to do, it can be so easy to walk away from that day being like, what did I even do today? And in reality, you may have done a lot, or m- maybe you didn't, but this is an easy way to solve that, and it's an easy way to make sure that your day is actually efficient and you're getting things done instead of just kind of being reactionary and dealing with whatever comes up when it comes up and trying to make sure you get everything done. Yeah, the nice thing about s- scheduling your day ahead of time, too, is that not only... Go going into that, you know exactly what you're going to do when you're supposed to do it. Is that you will take the same amount of stuff you were going to do, and you will get it done in less time. Oh yeah. Partially because you're not like I don't want to do this or what's next. Partially because like oh my calendar, I said I'm going to do 30 minutes. Like for example, are we do <laughs> like an easy example for this? Um, we do our community groups are sermon based, so mm-hmm. I write the I write the guide every week, and I have it in my calendar to do it in 30 minutes. Mm. Now I've done it enough that like. You know, it doesn't take me as long as it used to do, um, but like it could take me forty-five minutes or an hour if I'm kind of being lazy with it. <laughs> but because I have, you know, like on Tuesday mornings I do sermon prep, and then I do uh, the community group leader guide, mm-hmm. and then if we don't have an elder meeting, I have some time. But if we do, I don't have any time. But it's like I, I just gave myself thirty minutes. Now, of course, if you need to move things around, it's fine. Yeah. But like I got thirty minutes. I'm going to do it in 30 minutes. And I get it done almost every week in 30 minutes, which would take me longer if I just had on my task, do a community group leader guide today. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, hopefully a block calendar isn't like, um, ho- hopefully we're not the first people to recommend it because I feel like it's it's becoming more and more uh, common. But it's, it's it, like, if you've never done it before or if you're questioning it, if, if you have any question about like your productivity or how much you're getting done, it will change it. <laughs> it yeah. will make it better. Like there's no maybe. There's no. It will hopefully help. Like if if you're struggling with productivity or if you're struggling with that kind of idea of feeling like you didn't get much done, it, it this this is the this is the solution. I don't yeah. like saying that much because different things work for different people. But this is a solution that will help just about everybody. If you can use a calendar, use use a digital calendar, and actually plan out your day ahead of time, you will get more done. Yep. So again, think about how ministry is going for you right now. How overwhelmed you feel, mm-hmm. and think about. You, you know, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Do you have systems for these things? If you don't, don't you don't, you don't got to do all tomorrow, but start working on one at a time. Yeah. If you had a system for preaching, how much better would that make you feel? If you had a system for follow-up, how much better would that make you feel? If you had a system for tasks and request keeping, like knowing exactly what I'm going to do if someone asks me to do something, it becomes, it becomes habitual. You don't think about it. That would probably make you feel better. If you had a system for email, for setting up meetings, and for scheduling your day, you know, getting these habits, it, it makes your life a lot less stressful. Yeah. <laughs> and I and again, I ministry is hard and I'm not I'm not downplaying that at all. But I think what part of what makes ministry hard is that our schedules can be maybe t- more too flexible, assuming that we mm-hmm. gotta do what everyone needs us to do at any moment. And so we if we don't have we're not we don't put enough constraints on ourselves. So it seems like it's overwhelming when it certainly can be, but if you've kind of disciplined yourself to do certain things at certain times some of the week-to-week stuff definitely goes away. Yeah. So those are six needed systems to improve your ministry. I also would say this. We mentioned a couple of previous episodes. Now that we have a million episodes on this, <laughs> yeah. if you're new to this, you know, I'm not saying go back and listen to all of them, but I would maybe encourage you to go scroll down and look through certain topics because we've covered, we've done this for four years this summer, coming on four years. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And we, like, never, we only, we only take breaks on purpose. Yeah, Thanksgiving that's true. and that's Christmas. True. Yeah, there might have in the four years there might have been less than four unscheduled weeks that we have oh, not yeah. done, and yeah. probably has been two years since we haven't done one <laughs> yeah. unscheduled. Yeah. So that's anyway, wow. there's a lot of stuff that we do, and so just don't just think because I'm here now. You know, you can scroll back and find stuff that's helpful for you. Yep. And of course, if you're on Facebook, our Facebook group, Practical Church Planting, we've got over 1,500 people in there now. Yeah. And people are asking questions, and so that's a way to connect. And uh, 
Yeah, that's six needed systems to improve your ministry. Thanks for being with us. We'll be with you next week on Practical Church Planting.